All right, guys, so welcome to another episode of What You Picking. Today we're here with Leroy, Blood, Sweat, and Cell, and we're going to check out what Leroy's picking. All right, guys, as promised, we're here with Leroy in his warehouse um, that he has all his gadgets and tools and all this kind of stuff. So, Leroy, if you would, just give a brief introduction of who you are and what you pick and how, how long you've been doing this and all this kind of. My name is Leroy, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Cell. I uh, actually born and raised in New England, but now I live down in South Carolina. Um, I've been doing flea market swap meets, reselling pretty much since I was about 19 years old. Kept me out of trouble and it's just something that I really enjoy doing. Got into eBay back in the day when it was really new. And on and off, I would sell on eBay and picked up the niche of tools. And I really enjoy selling tools. Perfect. So like when you, uh, when you're out picking, I know, you know, everybody does kind of have their own thing that they're looking for. I mean, obviously you've mentioned the tool thing. Is that something you're always on the lookout for? Like what are some, some little, uh, tidbits on that? Like what, how do you find it? Where do you go to find it? That kind of thing. I, I, I do look for tools. I'd be fibbing if I said I don't have other stuff here. Um, Eric knows that. But um, I really enjoy getting my stuff from flea markets and estate auctions. Okay. Um, up in the area where I am in, outside, just a little bit outside of Charlotte, about an hour outside of Charlotte, there are a lot of uh, older houses, a lot of older people up on the top side of Charlotte that have... Um, a lot of farms, farm equipment, hand tools. I mainly do hand tools, and that's where I do a lot of my sourcing. Um, once in a while, somebody will bring something to me if, if they know that I'm selling tools. So we're talking tools, and, and talking with Leroy, obviously he knows quite a bit about tools, and he, he's, like he said, he's on the lookout for these hand tools. So when you're talking hand tools, like you have some things you might could show us about, like, what kind yeah, of hand tools are looking at? I have a recent pickup that I picked up, and it's um, what it is is it's a dolly. It's a a lot of. Now, when he first said dolly the other day, I really when I think of dolly, I think of something with wheels, like that you're hauling a barrel or something. So, so this is an auto body tool for for doing auto body to put inside the fender, and then you, you use the hammer on the outside. A lot of these tools, guys, I haven't used. A lot of tools, I, I you know, I did do construction for a while, but I really, really enjoy tools. I just, I've been around them for a while, but some of them I don't know exactly what they do. But if I haven't seen it before, I always make sure that I can do pick it up and grab it. Yeah. So this is just an auto body dolly. Um, and then I have stuff like, here's another auto body dolly in here. I keep my stuff in bags just so it doesn't get moisture or anything because I am in the south. Yeah. I really enjoy hammers. Again, guys, I apologize. It's in a bag. Ah, that's cool. Yeah, that's a man. That's a tiny hammer. Yeah, <laughs> and and some of this stuff, guys. Some of the stuff, guys, goes for like thirty dollars. Wow. Um, just for a small little hammer. There's there's some stuff, hobbies I've done in the past. Remote control cars. Oh yeah. Um, I picked these up in Delaware, and it's just. It was in a the box, controllers, yeah. and it's just a backup remote for somebody. And I literally paid like five cents each for them, and I'll sell them for thirteen, fourteen dollars. But somebody needs that replacement. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know, I know, like with some of the stuff with the tools. So I go to a lot of yard sales. I go to, you know, estate sales myself. I know a lot of these yard sales. I see tools from time to time, and hand tools is something I've never really. Like I'll pick up some on occasion, but it's not something I'm looking for all the time. So are there some specific brands that you're finding that, you know, hey, I know if I see that, that's something I should look for. If I see like this here, the, don't really know which brand this is, but this is like flaring tools. Oh, yeah, yeah. For when, you, when you're dealing with plumbing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the specialty stuff is the stuff that I really do look out for. Yeah. Because this, a lot of the specialty stuff you don't see every day. I have some stuff that, like door hardware, hardware Eric oh, yeah, yeah. works with door hardware. Some of these door hinges and door hardware, some of this stuff is worth $30, $40. And 
and somebody will have it at their house and you can get it, you know, pretty, pretty cheap. Um, I really enjoy boxes, any kind oh, of, yeah. any kind of like old socket boxes, metal, right, right. the tin boxes. You're buying them for a dollar, you're selling them for $15, $20. There you go. And then sometimes what I'll do, we'll get into it a little further, is I do some restoring on some of this stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so for me, when I'm looking at these at these kind of uh, tools, I mean, obviously, you're not just picking up, like, the Dollar General, that kind of stuff. Like, it, I know you mess with sockets a little, a little bit. Um, so I know a lot of times I'm seeing the ones that are cheaper, and obviously, you're not going to get that kind of money out of, out of those things, but... Yeah. You, you'd be surprised. Some of the Snap-on stuff, some of the Conewell Snap-on, um, some of the older SK stuff, the smaller stuff is either smaller or bigger is where the money is. Okay. So if it's in the middle, not saying there's no money there, there's definitely money there, but it's just more of the, the larger stuff and the really small stuff. You know, for me, I, I was thinking the other day because I was actually messing with my lawnmower. I don't know about you guys, but like for me, a half inch, I never have one. A number 10, I never have one. Like yeah. I, every time I go to look, I was like, what is everything half inch or number 10? A lot of it is. So you do sell sometimes in just individual sockets, right? Just oh, so yes. Yes. I don't have many here in a lot of these boxes. But I do, um, I do do a lot of individual like crafts. Right, right. Because what I do when I do the when I do the headings on eBay, mainly I do I sell on eBay. Um, I put replacement. Yeah. And you'll be surprised. Well, if they're people, like me, they've lost the number two. Type <laughs> in replacement socket. Yeah, replacement yeah. Replacement screwdriver. Yeah. Um, this, this is something that I really enjoy. Is um, it's it's ratchets. These are these are torque wrenches. Oh wow! This is a really nice. This is actually for transmissions back in the day. Yeah, and these here. This one's probably probably about thirty bucks. This one's about eighty dollars. Wow! Me. This one has a swivel head, and it's just this weird stuff that you don't normally see. So you see screwdrivers, sockets, yeah, yeah. ratchets. Of course, I love that stuff. But when I see this kind of stuff, I geek out. Yeah, because it's not stuff that I normally see. Again, I'm really big on hammers. Um, I'm really big on vices. Mm. I have a vice here that it, it's just it's just a, a you know regular metal vice. But some of some of the vices that I've sold jeweler vices is what I like the smaller stuff. Oh yeah. Some some of this stuff can go for really good money. That's I've awesome. sold some for like three hundred and fifty dollars. Man, that's awesome. So one of the things that Leroy does, and, and I think a lot of people do it with different items, but because he's messing with tools and metal and this kind of stuff, I know that he does a lot of restoring stuff to where it making it look better than what it was when he got it. So Leroy, like take us through that process a little bit. Like what are you looking at when you pick stuff up? So this one here, I, I didn't really finish it up yet. It, it's a really odd hammer. Um, has a little bit of wood, needs a little bit of wood repair here. Yeah, that's and kind of wild. what I mainly do is I'll take the I'll, I'll take the wire wheel. This is just a brass wheel. Everybody always asks, "What do you use to clean them?" The number one thing I'm going to tell you: just use a wire brush. Yeah, yeah. A wire brush. I have chemicals. I don't dip them. I think it takes a little bit too much time. I so you. I really like using the wire brush, uh, variable speed, and I'll clean it up and check and see if there's any cracks or how bad it really is before right, I right. get into it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. My restorations are about 15 minutes. Yeah. I, I'm not that guy yet. Hopefully I can get to that point where I can do a lot of better ones. I've done some in the last couple of weeks. So I like using the wire brush and I like using the, uh, this, just a buffing, a buffing pad. I also have a grinder here. I do some of my, to refinish some of my, um, knives or some of my chisels. I'll just put a little sharp them, just up, put a little sharp them up a little yeah. bit. Um, you know, it, it's it's real. It's good to it's good to have a lot of um, stuff. You know that you don't touch. Yeah. But when it comes to tools, some of it you don't touch at all, and then some of it, if you just clean it up a little bit, you can you can really see a turnaround. Um, I the dolly that I showed you guys earlier, that didn't look like it did when I got it. When I got it, it was it was all roughed up, and I spent probably about fifteen minutes on each one. And I'll be honest with you guys, I probably made about fifteen dollars extra on each one I didn't go overboard I just just cleaned it up a little bit so to the to the naked eye it just 
it looked a lot better. So, I mean, I guess when we talk about restoration and we talk about doing this, I mean, obviously it's something you enjoy, but it's not merely just for the fun. It's to bring more value to the item you picked up, bring it back to life, right? Yeah, because, I mean, all kidding aside, guys, I do this to keep the tools out there. I don't sell new stuff. Yeah. Um, most of my stuff is probably 70s, 90s. Between 70s and 90s right. is the year that I end up picking up. I don't look for that, but that's what I end up picking up. So a lot of that stuff is still working tools. It's yeah. not just a showpiece. Right. Now, do you do any stuff like, uh, I know for me, I, I've been guilty of leaving tools outside and them getting a little crusty, getting a little rust on them. So do you do like the old bath dip and that kind of stuff? How do you handle that kind of stuff? Sometimes I do. Um, and there's something that I'll show you that, that I use uh, in, a, in a minute here. Sometimes I do, but again, like I said to you guys, this is my best friend. There you go. This is my best friend. I'll be doing a video with Eric on a Tuesday, and I'll put it on mute, and I'll walk over here, and I'll just polish it up yeah. real quick. I just grab it, and I just, just a light, just, just to get the, just to get a little bit of the dirt off. That, that's all I do. It's, it's, there's not rocket science. Um. There is stuff that I'm working on. I'll do new handles and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I have this one here that I just checked out. I think I'm going to be able to really make this pop. I'm going to chrome it out like you saw the other piece. Oh, nice. Chrome this out really nice with nice. different grit, different grids. And I just, I enjoy hammers and just the there way that is. they, you know, they curve in the handles. Some of these handles, when you see them busted up like this one here, if you look, if you look at this hammer yeah. as a hole there. Now I'm learning epoxy and colored epoxy. Oh, sweet. So what I'll do is I'll take this. I won't even. I'll take it off, but clean it up and then put it back in. I'll put epoxy because epoxy is going to be as it's going to be as a strength. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put a color in it. I might put like a blue in it. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with. I'm not gonna replace the handle. It's still gonna be strong because the epoxy is gonna take up that strength. There you go. So Leroy's got the secret sauce when it comes to uh, this, but he's gonna give you the four one one on that deal. Yeah, th it's it's just a it's just a, a cleaning. You have to use gloves and everything. It smells. You're gonna put it in water. There's instructions here. If you guys are ever looking to clean any kind of metals or anything, you guys can see it on here. Try these guys. So it's got the thing there. FloridaLab.com. Yeah. Tell them Leroy sent you. <laughs> One of the, the things that I use um, when I really have to get into it, if it has a lot of pitting right. or if it's just really, really flaky, I'll dip it for a day or so. Okay. But normally, like I said, guys, quick and easy, just trying to make a couple of bucks. This is your best yeah. friend here. I know, I, like myself, I've used white vinegar to get rust off things, and it seems to work on, like, surface rust. But obviously, if you're getting in the cracks and crevices. Yeah. And, and again, I, I don't know. I'm just getting into that side yeah, of it to yeah. really, really learn it. I said never touch the tools. There you go. There you um, go. But, you know, some of the stuff I sell, I sell flea markets as well. So yeah. some of the stuff when I sell the flea markets, it just goes back out. Right. But when I start putting on eBay, I... Try to clean Dress it up. Dress it up a little bit. All right. Hey guys, so we're going to get Leroy to give us like a little brief tour of his workstation and little storage bin, the whole bit. So what I what I have is I'm actually in a studio. Um, I have about 700 square feet. Um, this is my, my pitches. I just have a couple of different lights depending on what shadows I need. Right. I, I have a couple of little stands that I use, just pop, clear stands oh, when cool. I'm taking my pitches. Um, this is my work, my, my station that I use for shipping, different tapes, always good to, uh, always good to hide with the white tape when you want to stretch your, uh, when you want to stretch your bags, guys, <laughs> and you always have the white tape to make that bag just a little bit of an inch bigger. There you go. There you go. Um, and then I use different, I use a bunch of different tapes. I personally like using the stations. Yeah. So when I need it, I can just and put it on yeah, some cool. people like the guns and that's everybody's preference just my odds and ends here this is just more more supplies right and then this is what i use for my my um my bin system yeah it's just small half bins and then the small ones i'll put small pieces in and i do 
Every shelf has is a hundred, so I'll do twenty five in each box. Okay. Plus these boxes are a little bit different. So you're putting it in the bin and also on the bag that you're putting in, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So some so so this is everything goes in a bag. Yeah. Um, and then it has a label. The, okay. The label is in the first picture as well. Yeah, I'll tell you guys. Like for me, that was one of my worst downfalls when I first get started is not being organized. So this is definitely a tip for you guys if you're out and you're you're just starting picking reselling. Start by with organization that'll make your life a whole lot easier down the road. <laughs> yeah, I've done that a few times where you have two items and you got to explain to them that you just can't find it. Yeah, yeah. and it still happens. Um, but this method works well for me. When you saw me at the photo booth, I take this tag, I put it down on the first picture, and then. I know, okay, that goes with that. It goes in a bag and it goes in the bin. There you so go. Each bin has has so many items in it when it gets full. Yeah. I'm working on putting new inventory, so these are empty. Right. And I know I do tools, guys. But, yep, this is a golf bag. And I don't know what this thing is. <laughs> some, some kind of golf club. Cameron, Scotty Cameron? Yeah. That's, that's probably one of the low end ones. Man, we're actually picking, we're uh, picking together this weekend. So I told Leroy he's coming back with hats and golf clubs and all kinds of stuff. But, uh, we, but I, I, we'll do, see. I do do a bunch of different things. I got death pile, guys. <laughs> Um, I think don't we all oh, man I, yeah. I I think it's actually a rite of passage like I don't know a single reseller I've ever talked to that doesn't have something like there's some guys that I'm like they're like oh let me show you my death file I was like no really show me your death file like yeah. no <laughs> yeah. so Leroy's like a lot of us you know he's got this back here that's kind of yeah. and, and I'll do parts and pieces you really yeah. can't see it but I'll take machines apart oh yeah and I'll sell just the motors or just the trays. This is this is a gate for an old shop smith. It's called. Yeah, I, I know a guy that says something about parting stuff out. Like this, this guy. I think it's my first interview. If you want to go back and watch it, <laughs> Kevin went in doubt, parted out, Mister Commonwealth Picker. But so, but you know, and always make sure that you you can always figure it out, guys. You don't have to go and spend. I paid I paid four dollars a piece for these, and I and I didn't want to mention this. Um, Eric is a really good guy. He gives me this platform. When I purchase this stuff, the bins, the the racks, okay? Mm. A lot of people go, they go and buy a new rack, they buy the black racks. I paid a hundred dollars for each one of these shelves. Yeah, that's about that's half price cheap. or less. That's dirt cheap. What you do is you look you go online and you look up you look up um used like store like store shelving. Yep. And stuff and that's what I did. That's how I got these. So it's always good to just look a little bit and see, you know, can I, is there a place right next to me? I was looking all over line for these totes. Yeah. I look up on eBay. Guess where they were? Three miles down the street. Oh, sweet. Then I went in this factory. Yeah. And it had conveyor belts, all different kinds of uh, used uh, warehouse stuff. Yeah. I've actually started going with, uh, with uh, bankers boxes for some of the, my bins because I mean, they're not as long as this. I like these cause they're open and you can see them, but bankers boxes, you can get them like for less than a couple bucks a piece. Like they're, they're pretty cheap, but the pro tip is just like he said, go and look out there. I've got some of mine out of storage units. I've got some of mine out of yard sales. Like I come Hey, are you selling the shelf too? Like yeah. it's one of those things. But if you want to splurge coming out of the gate, I would recommend not just kind of build as you go. Yeah. And that's the way to do it for sure. Cause now you've got a lot of shelving, um, and a lot of space that has stuff. And obviously even death pile and shelving. Mine, yeah. mine is literally a pile in, in and, the corner. And this, <laughs> and this is just one. We'll, we will definitely, we'll be a clip of it. We'll see the other death pile. Uh, there we go. All right, guys. So it's been great hanging out with Leroy today and learning about what he's picking. Leroy, could you give the people one last final tip if they're out there picking? Like, what should they do? Do not look over tools. That's all I'm going to say. There you go. Don't look over tools. At least look it up online. And sometimes you might get a, a big bin of them. Take the big bin, look a couple of them up. It might be worth it for you. All right, guys. So obviously, thanks to Leroy for hosting us here. Uh, don't forget to continue to tune in to what you're picking. Guys, we have numerous episodes that we've dropped in the past. 
I encourage you to go back and watch those guys. And as always, I hope you have good luck out there picking. Wishing you good, good finds and great picks. Later. Take care, guys.